All right, Mulligans and Hackers Golf. Uh, I'm Chris. I'm Alvin. And we are back with special guest podcast episode number six, where Alvin went solo again. Yeah, you were busy off coaching your volleyball team again on the weekend, and I decided I was going to get something done. And so I reached out to Brandon from Bingo Bango Bongo Golf, that is BBB. Yep. And he was uh, you know, accommodating enough to come on and have a chat with me. And it was, uh, it was a very interesting chat. Social media content creator, uh, you know, has a presence on Instagram. Uh, we had a good chat about what Bingo Bango Bongo is, because it's a game style. Yep. in golf Ooh, and uh um what he's doing in the social media world what he you know hopes to get into in the social media world and uh yeah it was a great chat really good connecting with him and i really enjoyed it well it sounds like you guys uh had quite the uh chat both on and off the podcast yeah uh, we chatted uh, for a little bit in between before in between and at the end of the uh, said podcast uh, yeah really cool guy enjoyed it um you know, just another connection made in the golf social media world. And uh, we'll probably chat with him again before too long. Perfect. Well, hopefully uh, our listeners will enjoy that podcast. I mean, we're staying busy um, in between podcasts over here, just putting together our uh, preliminary schedule for our upcoming Mulligans and Hackers golf season. Yeah, I actually have it right there in front of me. Uh, I sent it off to a couple of the boys, including you, to to just go over it and give it the um, – the once over to see if there's any you know any dates that we picked that you know maybe conflicted with some previous engagements this summer but uh it looks like there's going to be about 14 dates uh we're going to do our two majors the first major for the jug and the second major will be our tournament cha- our tour championship at the end of two day for the jacket um this year we're doing a strictly uh, medicine hat tour yep. so we have four dates one in may one in june one in july and one in august where we're going to play the other courses at medicine hat um so we'll play medicine hat red cliff desert bloom and cannot not in any specific order we haven't picked that out yet but um we'll uh i think it's going to be fun and the guys are from the feedback I got from the guys that I reached out to and gave the schedule to, uh, they're pumped and should be good. Um, it's it's kind of crazy fun. that uh, here's here's a staggering number for you: sixty six days until the first event. Sixty six days. Yeah. Hmm. Two months. Yeah, two months, buddy. Two months. That snow can't melt soon enough. Yeah, because I, I I fully expect to be on the course um, in a month. In, in a month. Yep. And we'll get a month of practice in, a month, month of working on our games, and then the tour starts. We have some other things, too, that we have to chat about um, because uh, I looked at the Alberta Golf Tour release their schedule on the weekend. Yep. Uh, that's something that has kind of been in my peripheral for a couple of years now to get one of those events in and you know maybe be truly considered an amateur golfer once you get an Alberta Tour uh, event under your belt. Um, but then uh, today, um, this is something we were talking about last year as well, the RBC Scramble, an official PGA event. Uh, those dates came out. So I have those written down, and we might have, have to, to get together with our scramble group here and figure this out. And figure something out for, the, uh, for one of the central events. Um, so I'd love to do something like that, too, outside of our tour, like, playing in these type of events we have our scramble like rolling hills that we will do as well yep um and our halo one and yep the, yes the canada day one that we do down at our home course so yeah so that's what's happening of that you know in between our podcasts this is the stuff we work on and again connecting with people even through social media messaging and so that's that's what we do yeah so i mean we got a good podcast here for you guys and Alvin did a great job the first time going solo. So we'll see if he can uh, follow that up with another good one. And it was a good Brandon was easy to talk to. So it was a, it was a good, it was a good chat. Perfect. So uh, for all our listeners would enjoy the podcast with uh, bingo, bango golf. And uh, you can watch it on YouTube 
And if you do, hit like and subscribe. That's yep. I think that's how you, they say it. Hit like and subscribe over on the YouTubes. And then we have it on our other socials, uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Where else? There's like, you got them on and, and places anywhere, where I don't even know. Anywhere you can get, anywhere you get your podcasts, um, you can hit subscribe or like or leave a comment. Um, we post it on our Instagram, at Mulligans and Hackers Golf. Um, you know, the YouTube that you're talking about. We're, we're just we have slowly- a link tree on all of our pages, right? Facebook, Twitter. Yes. Instagram. Yeah, a There's a link tree to all, to all of our stuff. So next time we'll next time we stop in and chat with you guys, we'll probably be uh, teeing up this, the upcoming season, um, which is crazy, right? But uh, without further ado, enjoy episode six of our special guest podcast, and uh, let us know how it goes later. Thanks, thanks everybody. Hey everybody, Alvin from Mulligans and Hackers here, and I'm here with Brandon from Bingle Bangle Bongo Golf. That's us. That's that right there. Hey, did I get it right? I think I did. You, you nailed it. Yeah, nailed it. boy. Right on. So, Brandon, thanks for coming on, buddy. I really appreciate your time. And, Same. Uh, so, BBB, let us have it. What is it? So, similar to, I'm sure, a lot of people coming out right now, it was born out of boredom and the pandemic. This This um, whole thing that we do is exactly the same thing. Yeah. So I know it, like a lot of people spawn that way. I was someone who the last few years kind of suppressed golf. It was kind of that thing my girlfriend saw me take up a lot of time or, you know, took up a lot of money. But, you know, the more you suppress something, the more it kind of just explodes out. And that's kind of how Bingo Bango Bongo Golf was uh, created. I saw all these other accounts kind of popping out and I said, I've always wanted to do that. And instead of just watching it, I was like, why don't I become part of it? And I just started posting little things here and there. You know, I really try to do creative and genuine stuff, stuff that was our own, rather than just repost other people. I know that's a whole thing on Instagram. But um, yeah, so we started doing our own. That's kind of where we kind of, I started following you and the the content that you were making and I you know, I, I found myself hitting the like button a lot. So, um, and that was a huge thing. Like when we came out, you know, I was ready to be roasted because, you know, I don't have the greatest swing. I'm not throwing low scores, but it was a complete opposite. It was people like yourselves and people in the States. And I've had people, you know, in Korea and Switzerland reach out and just say, I really like what you're doing. Uh, keep it up. And that was kind of, the momentum to keep, you know, let's make this a community. And um, what kind of really spun it on was um, my father actually had a stroke during the pandemic and he was, you know, my golf idol. And, you know, to see that happen so quickly and there's such a change and like, you know, he won't be golfing the way he used to again, but that doesn't mean he won't golf. He can still drain 10 foot putts. So I said, you know, there's no time like the present. Like, I just got to start posting, uploading, and just, like, again, be true to myself, and good things will happen, and they kind of have, so. That's cool. Yeah, and it's same thing with us. Like, we wanted to – we were going to golf, and I came up with the idea of what we do because we have a tour that we do with our buddies. and I love that. And uh, we'll be going into our third season shortly. I actually just did a mock-up of the – schedule for this summer um and again we get six 12 guys you know doing golf playing golf together on a certain day and we play a lot of golf in between that but these are the events where we all kind of get together and go hey we're it's for bragging rights today right and that again same thing just like you born out of the pandemic and um depression had a lot to do with it and i'll yeah. keep hammering that you know it it affected me and i needed to, something to to get out of it especially at this point in my life where I am, where I'm closer to 50 than I am to 45. Um, what am I going to do? Kids are all yep. gone. You know, me, me and my wife, we both have jobs. What do you do? What, what is, what is there when your family is gone and, 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 you know, chasing what they're going to be doing in life and you and you as an individual are like, okay, what's my next step? What am I going to yep. do? And 
again, my family and friends will tell you this is so outside of my comfort zone, so outside of anything they would have ever thought I would have done because I'm, I'm an introvert. It, it's this guy and this guy alone, and I don't have a ton of friends. I have a lot of acquaintances, but people that I trust to get in this circle, right? So this here, what I'm doing, um, is bringing me out of that bubble and, and, okay. and, and getting into the community. Like, like I mean, this is our... This will be our sixth podcast of this second season with a guest. Never thought we would be here. Yeah. Right. And um, it just, it it is like you said, connecting with that community. Like we have, we have such a, we've over the last couple of years that we started this, the group of friends that we have, we chat with all the time. Like there's messages going back and forth all the time. Right. So, that keeps you in interest of when you're not playing like because again we're in alberta winter it's you know we just came off a couple of days of minus 30 right snow yeah on the toronto ground. here so we got thing, snow right? on the ground we, we do some simulator golf we got into a simulator league this year me and chris so that keeps us swinging clubs at least once a week um but the community is something special especially in this what i say these the the creators the um the people that are reaching out and and connecting with with people like like you um makes this just really cool it's 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 fun it's like like you said waking up in the morning and maybe not having an idea of like what to do or now it's the complete opposite i have so much things on my list of you know exciting things to um to do and uh, people to reach out to and people to talk with that there's never that problem now it's kind of like over creative simulation, but yeah, it's I, it's I a good that. place to be in. But again, even as a guy like me who who is not you know doesn't do the technology thing very well, figuring out how to do how to do a post on Instagram with with letters and pictures and and I mean I I never knew how to do that like even a year ago, you know, like that those little steps. Yep. Right, and, and here we are. Here we are doing a podcast. Like I know, I guess so, and like guess host so, bingo bango bongo. How? I didn't think I'd be on a podcast this early and it's exciting. Yeah, and, um, and, but this is, this is how we grow, right? Um, we're, we're good friends with uh, Mac from over at on the screws podcast. Yeah. So um, I was actually sorry to cut in nope, before I forget. Um, so I, their home course at Port Hope is absolutely wonderful. I grew up playing that course. We actually used to use that as our, like we had a membership at one course, but we'd play there once a year as like the championship round because it was such a beautiful course and they've done a little extra work on it to make it that much more special. So you're in Southern like Ontario, just outside the GTA play Port Hope golf course. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And even in that, like connecting with those guys and then other guys and save power podcast and and that community, like, and just being, being in that community is so cool, man. Um, So what else do you do? Like, like, is there is there so, um, other guys involved in this with you? So uh, it was kind of my brainchild, but I wouldn't say it's just mine. My buddy Evan, um, who I grew up golfing with, it was like a huge inspiration. Like we used to make silly videos before it was even just golf. Um, so doing this together is just kind of another match made and having like we're just like kids again playing out on the yeah yeah you know well I mean we have memberships yeah. Uh, me and my friends, like we're, I'm the oldest guy that, that plays in this, in this Mulligans and Hackers tour and everybody else is kind of, but we're all kind of in the same place where our families are growing and they don't quite need dad as home, home as much. And uh, we're kids playing for, you know, big trophies and jackets. Yep. And, you know, like we do a FedEx cup style tour for this, for the entire summer. Right. And, we're playing against each other for bragging rights and yeah and i mean what better time is there than going out with your friends and you know i'm going to beat you today right yeah and 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 again calculating that over the summer it's like well i've got four wins you know and the point structure is all set right so first year chris my partner in crime here won the 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 mulligans and hackers cup which is the one that we play for all season last year clark won it and we have uh, a tour championship at the end, which is a two-day event, and we play for a jacket. And then in the middle now, last year, we started with, uh, we've got a jug, like the Claret jug, that we play as a major in the middle of the season for double the points, right? So we're, we're, we're and again, we're, 
We've just been playing a game and having a blast doing this, right? Yeah. And, so, there's that, and like going back to like mental health too, like I found myself just in the perfect, like being on the golf course was my, you know, happy place, you know, not to use that expression, but it was just so nice to be outside. You know, I was with a buddy, uh, fresh air, and it was like the only thing you could do during the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, that's um, how that's how we started going. We we played, I think the first year, like because we hadn't played a lot of golf in my entire life. And me and Chris, we we found ourselves down at the golf course because it was something we could do. And that's where it's like, hey, I really like this. This is cool. How do we build on this? And then when you get in that state of being, let's say, you know, not locked down, but not being able to do anything. Yeah. Um, it breeds these type of ideas. And, and here we are, like going into season three, it's just mind blowing that, that we're here. Yeah. And I love, uh, I love what you're doing there with um, your own league because, you know, it's not about, like you were saying, maybe not the best score, but when you're in a playoff round about with someone, you know, draining a birdie putt against your buddy um, yeah. to take, you know, the jug or yeah. take the season, oh, yeah. Yeah, it that is, is exciting. Like, and you play the entire summer for it, you know? Yeah. Like, and, you know, guys miss some days here and there. They, you know, again, vacation and family takes takes precedence and stuff like that throughout the summer. But, you know, they come back the next day and, you know, they want points. They want to move up on that scoreboard, right? It's, you know, and um, this year we're doing it a little different because the last couple of years, um, once a month we traveled out of town to these yeah. little hidden gems around southern Alberta. Um, and there's, there's a lot of hidden gems around southern Alberta. BC and Saskatchewan that we played. Oh yeah, um, BC. I can't wait to get out there for some courses. Yeah. You guys too, actually. Yeah. Um, um, but this year we're doing a strictly a Medicine Hat tour because we have five courses in Medicine Hat and close, I guess Red Cliff you could call Medicine Hat. So we're going to do. We play a little um, executive par sixty six golf course. That's our home course. Um, you know, for us hackers, when we started, like nothing was, was, it wasn't daunting to be at the course, yeah. right? So, you know, you're hitting a drive and you're still just a nine, eight, nine iron in. That's cool, right? You're not, not intimidating when you got to pull out three wood for your second shot on yeah. four, right? So, uh, but this year we're going to do the Madison Hat course, which we played, you know, quite a bit. Um, Desert Bloom, Red Cliff, and Connaught. So they're going to be, so it's strictly going to be a Madison Hat tour this year. So that, we're I, all of us are looking forward to that yeah right because and, that, I, and more content too which is awesome yeah and, and so there, there's another thing about content creation let's let's get into that a little bit um you know i have all these ideas on my head that i want to do like doing little sports review like sports net style reviews of our of our rounds in the day but you have to get video and to be honest with you um when we go to play our tour events nobody's taking video because we're all yeah. focused on playing golf, right? Exactly. You know, yeah. there's there's points to be won here, and there, you know, there's a victory to be had. Like even setting up a, a GoPro is who's going to look after that? No, nobody yeah. wants to. Nobody wants to take that button there and look after that because we're, we're playing, right? And we don't want that distraction. So I'd like to get more of that. I just don't know how we're going to do it yet. Yeah, so. it's uh, actually our struggle as well. Um, Luckily, I have a buddy who's in um, video production, and we're gonna take some time at some courses, and uh, you know, hopefully, do like a very, um, more almost like a review of the course, and then also like a couple of sketches kind of thing, and then of course uh, maybe like a few bingo, bango, bongo matches, or even just regular one v one matches, but with that better look. Um, yeah. So, do you see yourself uh, in doing these type of videos, starting a YouTube channel? Uh, that's the idea. Like right now I kind of have one parked, um, for that, you know, I'm even thinking podcasts as well. Um, just, uh, bingo, bango, bongo banter was the idea that I made. Hey, nice. <laughs> I like it. It's not bad. Eh? It's not bad. That's not bad but, at all. But exactly like you're saying, just try that, like try it and then see where it goes and then see what happens rather than like, think about it. Um, I think the more that you just try it, the more you start seeing, okay, that's, not how I should do it. Maybe I can evolve it, but you're never going to find out unless you just kind of fail and succeed. Well, yeah. And, and again, from, from experience, you know, this that we're doing here, it's growing organically. Mm-hmm. You know, we haven't stayed stagnant. Like it's not, 
I won't say it's not worth doing, but even this, we're here, we're, I'm doing another podcast with, you know, with a, with a group from Instagram that, that we found that we just reached out and, and connected with. That's more important than to say the downloads on Spotify, the views on YouTube, this connection, I think is just, and the, what's happening in the background with, we'll say content, it's, it's going to do its own thing. Yeah. Right. So even if you're going to start a podcast, just you, you do it and you reach out and get people to, to who, who want to see you succeed involved, mm-hmm. involved in what you're doing. Right. Yeah. Set yourself up for success. And um, yeah, I can just, you, you won't stumble upon it, but yeah, you kind of find your way yeah. um, doing these little tests. Yeah. And, and, you know, we've had other people that were eventually will work out getting them on the podcast and chatting and, I like connecting with the other, I say pages and groups like us, because I consider you a group like us, you know, we're, we're, we're in the social medias, but we like to play golf. Yeah. I don't see us getting into that. I want a PGA pro on the podcast. If it happened, great. But I think this for like, cause a lot of our, our, a lot of our guests are of a podcast in the golf realm, we'll say, right. So, yeah. So let, you know, we don't mind chatting with other people and, and promoting. We promote a lot uh, that we that connects with us. Um, Thirty six a day, right? Yeah, I love I their mean, lids. I feel I was at the Toronto golf. Well, show I was going to. I was going to talk. Just them. I was, them. Yeah, I was going to just. I was going to bring that up in like literally a few seconds. So you were at the Toronto golf show. Yep. Just, just give us a, give us a little bit about what that was like there. So, of course, like the week or so before, I think, was the PGA golf show, obviously um, big, very big. So when you're seeing that online and then come to our Toronto golf show, you know, you have to kind of hold your expectations. But it was really awesome, actually. Um, All the golf courses and a lot of golf products were really, you know, up front showing off. Um, I actually won a few golf rounds just by putting my toonie and a little coin dispenser. Nice. Um, So that'll be exciting next year. But yeah, I didn't get to uh, Mike's booth there. I sadly stopped at triple bogey and uh, had a Caesar. And then all of a sudden it was like, <laughs> oh, I have to get home. Mm. But uh, yeah, tested out some drivers. Like I got the um, an older uh, T1 there, like a, a Titleist driver I've been wanting to hit. And then um, the Stealth one, I didn't get the, st- they didn't have the twos available yet, but um, I did like the Stealth. <laughs> <laughs> that's something I, I i am never going to get to try one of those not unless it's like 10 or 15 years down the road when they're like yeah because i'm you know i've got the tailor made burner uh great club. I, got, I got an r9 R driver um, that's what i got that's you know and I, i've got a callaway diablo that i'm cycling through uh so i'm having a little bit of difficulty with my driver swing right now so um again it's just trying everything to figure that out but Again, we've never taken lessons. So everything is watch videos, try it out, and just trial and error, right? Uh, yeah, I hear that, that. I actually oh, well, I was just gonna say I took one lesson um in my life. And not that I'm saying there's nothing wrong with lessons. I've just it's more about time and where I'm at. Yeah. Like I feel like I'm not on tour, so I don't really need it right now. Yeah. Um, but my cousin fixed my cross grip. I grew up um using my uh, grandpa's old lefties or my dad's righties. And he said, it's time to pick which clubs you want to use. And I went righty, but with a lefty grip. Yeah, that's Chris, our, my again, my buddy. Uh, he, he swings right side, but he's got that reverse grip where his left hand is low. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yeah, he's got the, the cross grip, yeah. Yeah, and that's, that's – and again, watching that guy is – I've said it before. I'll say it again to you here. Watching him swing, it's better now than it was, we'll say, in the first year. But it was like a full body seizure watch watching him get through the get through the swing get through the ball and it was like dude that is atrocious but yeah damn can he hit the ball a long way and that's funny because usually a cross grip a lot of people say that can hinder distance like you kind of get to um a certain spot um you can't really like unleash but i guess chris has found a good um, spot again we've 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 yarded off some of his drives and they're over 300 so when he when, when he uh, wild that pisses me off actually, but because I'm about 220 off the tee box, but let's not go there. Um, but so, yeah. So how many rounds of golf do you get in a year? Like is, is part of what you do um, 
like a lot of golf as well? So last year, um, we didn't play as much as we wanted. We had planned a lot more, but like kind of life got in the way as it does. Um, and not having memberships places, it was more of pick tea times. And then we actually had a few, you know, days where people dropped out. You know, we're supposed to be two twosomes kind of back nine. We're going to film a video. Mm-hmm. Ended up just being two of us. And then we played with two randos. So we said, I don't that, think they want yeah. to be part of Bingo Bango Bongo yet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 But we still got content out of it. And that kind of was, again, a big learning day of like, at the end of the day, I want to golf. And I want to share our fun experience, but I don't want it to be a job where I'm like dragging around a tripod. And yeah, exactly. Not hitting good shots because my mind's on it. I love just being out there and kind of capturing that feeling if I can at the same time yeah. without hindering the round too much. Yeah, I know. We, I think I got 103 rounds in last year. I heard your total. I was listening to your um, few of the podcasts with Mac and then the super uh, sprint uh, guys there. And I'm so jealous. <laughs> but again, for us, like when, when we're done work, our golf course, our home course is literally, uh, you know, a minute away from where we work. That's awesome. So when we're done, we're usually done at four o'clock. Um, it stays light out here till 10. You can yeah, go get your so. 18 and after work. So, you know, we have our change of clothes at, at work. We don't even go home. It's just from work to the golf course during the week. And then on the weekends, it's, you know, sometimes me and Chris, we found ourselves getting 36 in on a Saturday, 36 in on a Sunday. The best. Um, like you said, when you talk about a place where you like to be and you're a happy place, well, um, if, if, if all, if instead of sitting at home and, and just for the sake of being at home with, you know, no kids at home, wife working or doing, because my wife has hobbies that she does, um, would I rather be home or would I rather be at the golf course? Well, I'll just go play at the golf course. Like I'll just go live there, you know? Yeah. And so that got us, that that's where all those rounds came from. And I'm hoping we can do that again this summer. Um, it was really the beginning of last year was, was kind of trying because Chris pulled or uh, tore his Achilles. So he was yeah. uh, six weeks out without playing golf. Um, and because he's my, my buddy in doing this, um, you know, that, that kind of hurt, hurt hurt the start of our season a little bit. and uh, But we got caught up later on, and, and that's where the 36 a day started coming in on the weekends. It's like, yeah, man, you know, we would finish and he'd go, so are you going home? I'm like, well. Oh. And, and uh, i got to give a shout-out to our home course, Cottonwood Cooley. Um, they are so accommodating to what we're doing. They, like, if there's an open team spot, yeah, guys, just go. Go do your thing. That's great. And... and uh, they have been very, and that's why we're still there. Like, um, they just let us do our thing. And when you, when, you know, when you just stay at the golf course, like, can we, can we go out? Yeah. Just jump on the back nine. Just go for it. Um, the best you, feeling you bet, you bet. So shout out to Cottonwood here. Um, so what do you see now? Um, what do you see, uh, triple B, um, in the next year or so, like, like, I know you want to do content. Um, do you see yourself getting into that podcast world and that, that sort of connecting world? I yeah. think so. I, yeah, I'm, I'm going to definitely do a few, they might not be posted, but, um, you know, they might definitely going to do a few podcasts like this, uh, sit down to, with a few creators and, um, people in the, in the industry. Um, but I'm also interested, like you were saying, like, um, having these people similar to you and being able to post them because a lot of people don't like to make the content, but they would like it. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's, could someone just follow us and, or can someone create this for us? I would love to do that. Like um, one is a big one is para golfer for sure. With the way condition my dad is like, I would love to give them a bigger light, um, you know, accessible and disabled golfers, like having that, um, somewhere they can post videos and or like I can create for them. That would be great. Um, and then, yeah, just like matches with other people in the industry would be fun too. Like I know heading down to Port Hope to play Mac and Bryce and them would be easy to do. Right. Um, there's a beautiful stay and play Belmere wins just outside the GTA. I'm hoping to get a few people this summer, maybe do um, some content there, stay and play. Um, kind of like a behind the scenes of like a tournament 
Um, but uh, yeah, there's a lot stirring, but I think we're going to start with playing a lot more golf because last year was not enough golf. Nowhere near you guys. Yeah, that's a, a good start is playing more golf. And I guess the content will come later because yeah. kind of, again, what we got into was in the summer when we're playing our podcast, basically we're talking about what we're doing, our leagues. And I think this year, because the last two years we've just done audio, this year we're going to do the video aspect of it while me and Chris talk about our golf. And maybe we'll learn and figure out how to, as we're talking about it, getting those screenshots up on screen about both the final scores, the names, yep. the stats, getting, we're kind of figuring that out now with, with this whole Zoom thing and uh, being able to, to get things on the screen. Yeah. You know, and all learning curves too, right? Like, yeah. You know, well, and, and I so, saw it too, um, it was new for you guys, I guess the review, how um, I saw you weren't a huge fan of uh, yeah. Full Swing. Uh, yeah. Um, but fair enough. I think they started with, no offense, one of the weaker episodes first. And it was also in a format I had seen a bit of, um, the, was it full speed or whatever? The, yeah, um, yeah, the Formula One version. Formula One, the, yeah. Because I think I'd the Formula seen... One version did this for the PGA, right? The, the, yeah. group, the group who did it? Yeah. It must be the same crew. And I thought it was. It just felt kind of like I was ready for you know, a little bit of everything. And when it was so focused on those two, the buddy romance yeah, and nothing against those two golfers. No, it just uh, fell flat. Same thing. Um, Brandon, like, you know, I, I, did, I didn't want to be overly critical and, and, you know, say what I really thought of, of this, you know, which was absolute crap. I'm, I, yeah. I'm, I'm so not into, I don't, I'm not wasting my time watching pro golf. I'm just not, mm-hmm. I'd rather go play yeah, than, than watch that. So if you're, and you know say what you want about the other stuff like i'm not a fan of truly any all the guys that went to live there's nobody there that i'm a fan of Mm -hmm. so there's nothing there to draw me and the fact that they're playing for ridiculous amounts of money again that's not a drawing factor for me yeah you're right um even the pga like the men's side of it i like justin thomas um you know i don't mind First, one, a couple of years ago, when we got into this, and, and I don't, we don't normally talk about pro golf on our on our podcast or anything, but I'm quite willing to do it because when I first started, I, I really thought guys like Brooks Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau were going to be the future face of PGA, and they were going to take PGA and they were going to bring in that new youthful market mm-hmm. that they're kind of looking for. But then, and I, and I even said it, I think in episode one or two of the of season one that we did, I said. I, these are, I like those guys, right? Because they're going to, you know, they're young, they hit the ball a long way. There's drawing power there, but then you got closer to them and they're just, I don't want to call them jerks because I don't know them, but their persona, mm-hmm. their personas are so repelling. They don't yeah. draw people to them. Like they're like, they're, they're there for the sport. They're there to get what they can get out of it. And that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, s- screw promoting the league, screw all that stuff. I just, I want my money and I want my name, I want my face on the billboard, and that's it. Now, you could yeah, correct me if you could correct me if I'm wrong, because again, we're new to this golf realm. Um, I didn't grow up with golf. I, like, I, we would watch a final round on Sundays when I was growing up because it was just on TV. I didn't know what this was. Mm-hmm. So, so. I'm coming at it from a very new and a very, I guess, seasoned critique of all professional sports because I don't watch any professional sports anymore. Um, I don't, I fell out of love with hockey. Baseball is just, it's not a sport that I can just sit and watch for three hours. Mm -hmm. So when I got into golf and I started watching golf, I'm like, oh, I can, I can watch this because I like the skill on the course. But then you start getting, these guys that you're that aren't personable and again I don't know them so I'm coming at that probably a little harsh but how do you how do you relate to these people you know I like exactly. Brooks Kepka and Bryson DeChambeau like I'm, there's nothing there's no drawing power for a guy like me there yeah I after watch I'm not sure if you got to the Brooks Kepka episode of a- after of episode Soul one Sword. my friend I was like yeah I'm never watching another one of these episodes I am totally done I that's 49 minutes I'm not going to get back in my life. 
group, but right? I actually I, I was lucky enough, so I watched the first three episodes. Um, shout out to uh, Pace of Play, the uh, simulator in my neck of the woods out here. Um, new last year, they're awesome. You know, pop in, uh, great price too, like compared to some other places. Um, but yeah, they got the track man in there, and I was able to do the private bay, and I watched the first three episodes as I was golfing. So now, that I might be something I could do. That might be yeah. something I could do because uh, I think in the episode when I did the review, um, I put on the first episode, and then seven minutes in, I was already out in my living room swinging clubs with the with the episode still on in the office here. Right? I was like, yeah. "Yeah, I'm not watching this." And that's what I was doing. I was just kind of like peeking at the stuff I liked, and then when the Brooks episode came on, he was insufferable. Yeah, and it made me just cement the fact that I'm like, okay, this choice was i think out of like you said like the money grab and he might not win on tour again to be honest yeah so why not be part of something well again you get that paycheck and it's like well does it matter if i play golf anymore yeah now i don't begrudge them the money i do not begrudge them taking the money somebody offering them the paycheck really i don't because i mean that's it's life-altering money i get it yeah because i I've, I've said this to my friends around in in our whole just you know little group that we have um our little you know golf community that we have um if somebody said hey alvin we're going to give you a million bucks an episode for a podcast just don't bash the saudis yeah i'm pretty sure i could do that for at least three episodes yeah right you know what i mean might be hard but the fourth one might be tough but i mean you know if i could get three paychecks for a million bucks yeah i'll uh the fourth episode would probably be the one that did me in but you know if that's what we do we we're, we're you know we're all creatures that 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 want money um you know comfortable lifestyle but uh so i don't begrudge them of that but god you know ian poulter like what you know again you see it you see him do i really want to see that guy outside of golf i don't think so what the hell do I care about what Ian Poulter does when he's not swinging a golf club, right? And I mean, I, that's the thing. Justin Thomas, I like that guy. Like, I think he's a yeah. very genuine, personable dude. Well, I don't care if he goes to the pharmacy and gets allergy meds, man. Yeah, and his card bounces. Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't care. So, I mean, that that. But again, that's that's me personally. Like, I, again, I'd rather be connecting like this and and you know working on my golf swing in the living room. You know, like. I'd rather be doing that than watching that stuff. So that's just my personal opinion. So as harsher, as as, as true as I can be on that whole situation. And that's fair. I, I feel like the, actually the more I've been golfing, the more, the less professional golf I've watched. So Yeah, yeah. And I, I would, you know, if you see that episode, I, I, I would really appreciate comments because I know my opinion is probably not the prevailing opinion, like, because... Uh, the Pinehurst Six guys, uh, they were on our podcast there last, and um, uh, he's doing a episode by episode review that he's just posting, I think, on Instagram. And I've and I've checked those out, and so obviously there are people that hey, and that's content for those guys as well. Yeah, and, and, and I get that part of, it, especially if you're a creator and you want to do content, then well, you've got all these episodes in season one to do. Go do it. That's great. I'll just connect like this, like you and I here right now. I'd rather do this and do a review on an episode like that. Yeah, I will say though, the Tony Finau one was really good and the Joel Damon. Um, it's I liked seeing those ones because it was golfers I didn't know fully too much about and to see some more stuff about them, it was really cool. And actually Matt Fitzy's win, the US Open win was uh, really cool uh, behind the scenes. He was getting punished by the fans. Yeah. Yeah, they were in his ear all the time. So that's kind of a different side of the game you don't see. True, true. I, I And... Even saying that, I do watch a little bit more LPGA than I do any other golf because I some of I get, the two best golfers right now are there were Brooks and uh, Nelly there. Uh, yep, you bet. Yeah. And you know, having Brooke Henderson as one of the best female golfers on the planet, it helps a Canadian uh, fan get yeah. into that a little more as well, right? Um, yeah, it's not for I, I say this; it's not for the misogynistic reasons that people would probably think. I think that they're growing the game the right way they have some really good golfers i do take issue with um the lpga and when brooke henderson is leading she just she won a few weeks ago i think and that final round where she was in the lead you could not find it anywhere in canada to stream yeah yeah so 
when when groups like this say you know we're having trouble growing the game and you know we need we want more money and everybody wants more well you have a fan like me and i'm just one and there has to be more it's like well brooke henderson is in the lead i want to watch this i can't go to my tv and turn it on hey there it is i can't mm-hmm. go stream it hey there it is so how do you how do you get those eyes on the prize like mine i'm like i'm i, I want to watch it i want to put it on but i can't find it and then it's like well we don't get paid as much as the men do well there's your problem i can't yeah. get it i want to watch it i can't get it so how do i you know those are issues i have with with especially that type of stuff it irks me a little bit but um i mean I watched a little lpga yesterday uh the third round from the over in thailand or something uh yeah because a few it was in uh africa or like south africa at one point a yeah. few weeks ago and then i forgot that tournament it might i mean they're, thailand. they're so good like you know long off the tee box you know accuracy in their second shots the putt. i mean it's there they have a product that can sell yeah right and i'm and i'm a big fan it's just i want to watch brooke henderson play yeah as, and that's as, another, a, as a canadian yeah. fan right that's so, a huge part of it too seeing so, our canadian do so yeah, well yeah and so um just a sec here now all righty okay brandon so the bingo bango bongo is actually a style of golf it's a game in golf is it not it is a format similar to stroke play or match play skins game it is its own little format so it's um three points are scored on each hole uh bingo is scored for uh first person to reach the green uh bango is scored for if you are now all balls are on the green whoever has the closest at that point gets bango and then the first person in the hole gets bongo um so most times it's scored on if a chip in you would get bingo bango and bongo because okay or if you approach shot from like 90 yards in um and i actually learned it um two ways i played i think it was tiger woods 2010 some video game or not that old 2003 (laughs) sorry any tiger Um, woods game classic yeah and I was flipping through and I was just like, oh, this is a different format. Bingo, bango, bongo. Let's give this a try. And it was fun. And then I actually played in a few men's leagues when I was um, like 16 or so. I kind of snuck in when they had a free spot. Uh, some of the older heads did not like me coming out there, but some of the people did. And uh, that was one of the money games we played on the side um, was bingo, bango, bongo. And um Made a bit of money that way. Uh, got some hot dogs and Gatorades <laughs> at the uh, clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. Where I could drink. And uh, yeah, if I did well enough, i get the Snickers bar too. So cool. Um, it's it's a fun way to throw in like extra little bit of money. But um, so that's a, was, game, that's a game you would play when you're playing like an 18 round hole. Yeah. Game? So you don't have to like switch out anything. You can still play stroke play. And actually, we would kind of because a lot of times people will cheat. In the game of the actual bingo bango bongo, you would like chip, you know, just off the green, and then when you're up there, you can chip and have a better shot of that, and it slows down play. I never liked that. I kind of like just going for the pin every time, you know, trying to get your bingo bango and bongo. Cool. Um, but when I first started this page, um, there was a post. Um, one of the bigger pages mentioned this golf format, and I got excited. I'm like, oh, cool, there mention in my i'm gonna post on there and every comment pretty much every comment was how much they thought this golf format sucked (laughs) and it's the worst part of golf and this needs to be out of the game and i was like i'm trying to start a golf page with this name and (laughs) um but yeah that kind of worked as like you know what i'm going to turn some people around and maybe um change their perceptions so well it's interesting with the name we might have to try uh in one of our practice rounds, maybe try that this year. Put a bit of money up. I'd like to have yeah. a, I'd like to have a skins game with the guys too. We've talked about it for the last couple of years. You know, a couple bucks a hole or whatever. You know, so it's not breaking the I, bank. We also, when I was younger, so three things I always say to people who are new to golf to to try: um, bingo, bango, bongo is one, obviously. Uh, second is skins game. You do a dollar a hole, um, and then or even 
25 cents a hole and maybe a, a dollar for close to the pin on par threes. That's always a fun way to do it. Um, and then I would say um, cross country golf, if you have the uh, time and space for it. So what you need is kind of an open, quieter course, which is hard to find these days. Um, and you would just kind of tee off at two and maybe shoot for the sixth green. Um, okay. You know, it depends yeah. on the course, obviously. Um, yeah. But I grew up on an, a little nine holer and after playing the track, you know, 36 times, you kind of had to switch it up a little. So that's what we do. Interesting. That's yeah. A couple of the small hidden gems that we've played, like uh, maybe Maple Creek, Burstall, Saskatchewan, little community uh, nine hole courses that might work out. Uh, it's an idea well, if you have a, the it's, yeah it changes the course that you've maybe uh, played quite a few times um hmm. and speaking of out there i don't know have you played henderson lake outside of i think it's lethbridge lethbridge outside? we have not that's only lethbridge is only an hour and a half away from here we have not played yeah. henderson lake we haven't made it up um, quite that far yet we've played um bow island is out that that road number three bow island Tabor. we played that uh, we were going to play Coldale last year, but the when we called out to make reservations for the day we were going to play, they had a tournament that day, so that kind of mm -hmm. did that one in. Um, but then the next stop would be Lethbridge, which would be the Henderson Lake one. Nice, yeah. My cousin's a pro there, so that's why I'm just throwing that oh, out really? there. Yeah, um, I'm well, you hoping might to have play to. There this summer. Yeah, might have. To, you might play there this summer. I'm, I'm fingers crossed. We're going to see. So well, I'll let you know. You let us know because this is the type of thing that we're doing as well. We will make it a trip to, up there if yeah. you're if you're out there. Guaranteed. No, I, I would love that. We're either doing that or some form of like Top Golf or some kind of content thing if I come out west for sure. Oh, perfect. Um, and again, if 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 you came out, you let us know. We'll be there without a doubt because. I do believe um, Mike Johnny from 36 a day uh, has reached out to us and says he's going to be out here possibly in September and he is making oh, perfect. He is making <laughs> the commitment to driving from Calgary to here to play golf with us, which is a three hour drive. Yeah. So six hours driving after a plane ride from Toronto to Calgary to play golf with us. So, uh, we said, hey, we could meet you in Calgary because it would be better for us to drive to three hours. He's like, no, Alvin, if this is going to happen, it's going to happen this way. I was like, okay, man, if you're willing to do it, we will have the teat. I, I will literally have the golf cart in the parking lot waiting for your vehicle to pull in. That's awesome. But he, but that's part of this too, Brandon. It's like, we love the golf. We like golfing, so we, we would commit connecting with the community like we talked about earlier. This is part of it as well. Um, yeah, you know, when Mike was at the Toronto golf show, you know, I was, I was chatting with Chris when we were down at our, um, simulator league night, I was like, you know, wouldn't it be crazy if you and I got, you know, took a trip out there I just went and, and experienced that because again, we're new at, like, I still say we're new at this, um, Mac from on the screws, uh, doesn't quite give us that, uh, perk anymore that we're new at this because of the amount of rounds we've played. But we're still relatively yeah, you new. You get an eighty to hundred a year. That's um, you're not a new golfer. But we're new you're in the an golf. Avid golfer. <laughs> we're new in the golf community. They're new in the golf. That world. is true. We're still well, only two years into it, really. Right. We're going into our third season now. We're still only two years into this. So that's why I still say we're new into this golf world. Um, let we it asked, slide one more year. Yeah. Right. Let it slide one more year. Um, so yeah, man. If you come out this way, we'll something will happen. Either. Either, you know, you make the trip down here or we come up there. Um, depending on how long you're here, we might do both because, you know, we, there's some really nice courses here too that uh, that would be worth the trip to play. Yeah, and it's beautiful. And, uh, hey, if you're ever out uh, southern Ontario, like GTA, like I'm from originally Coburg. I don't know if you know that um, area. It's no. like an hour and a half outside of Coburg or out of Toronto. Um, just beautiful courses along there and, you know, Good I green drove, fees. Yeah, I, I drove through drove through Toronto in '92 because when we moved here, we drove here, so we actually did the entire circuit of Canada from uh, from the Bonav tip of the Bonavista Peninsula to Alberta. So I have been in every province in Canada. Um, 
have to make a trip. I have to make a trip out to the coast of BC so I can dip my foot there. So then I'll have Atlantic and Pacific. And sometime, bucket list, I have to head up to the Northwest Territories. Uh, yeah, to be there, and then I can say I've been everywhere in Canada, and that will be again. That's a cool bucket list. I think. I think so. I I loved it. That's I haven't seen my entire backyard yet. That's how I look at it. Yeah, um, yeah. I'd love to do that one day. Is hit every spot. That's where I need to go. Is up north. That's the only place. Yeah. So, um, I, uh, there's places in Newfoundland, like I grew up there, I spent, you know, first 19 years of my life there. There's places there that I haven't been, you know, um, the Viking village, Lance and Meadows. It's, it's a long ways away because it's right up at the tip of the, of mm. the neck. Um, but again, that's one place, fuck it, just, I'm going to go see it before I, you know, before I'm done. Um, and when we talk about golf, like I've. I've really been enamored with the Masters. The Masters has been mm-hmm. my my introduction to golf is the green jacket. It is it holds a special place for me, as you can see the flag. Um, I love when, it. When it comes to pro golf, the Masters that event just takes on a life of its own with me. Um, there's a YouTube channel. It's called the Masters, and on there, uh, this is something that I'm thinking about when we talk about future of what content we're going to do um they have the final round of every masters on that channel all the way back to 1968. i would love to do a a, a reaction video of all of those final rounds from 1968 up for and we're talking about youtube content that's something mm-hmm. I would really, but I, get, I need to figure out this whole how yeah. you do that because you know I'm so new at this too, uh, the technology part of it. So that's something I would love to do because it, I've I've already watched them. Yeah, so there are, some of them are awesome to watch. You know, 1968, the first one, the guy uh, Divisenso lost because of a scoring error on the card. Now back then, it probably was 68. It was like okay, well, it's, you know, but can you imagine like in modern day? Oh losing on 18 because you wrote down a a four when you got a three on 17. yeah and it's not any tournament either it's It's, not any tournament this like you get that you're in you're you're enshrined in this again community right you get the green jacket you're allowed to go and play that tournament every year for as long as you want which is kind of why we took that jacket idea for our tour championship at the end of the year as well because i am such a fan of that yeah so Uh, we always did it too so um we will never get to play augusta as you know the surfs that we are we you know i might never even set foot on that place but one of the bucket lists me and chris talked about was saint andrews of course yeah like golf like you know you can just go and pay your green fee and go play saint andrews maybe that's something you know and for you know 10 years 60th birthday you know just make a trip to say over there and stay for a week and play St. Andrews. That'd be a wicked bucket list place to play. I would do it. That's on mine as well. Having, I'm Scottish uh, descent. Um, I have always had that as a dream is play the 18th road hole and mm-hmm. just have, you know, some bagpipes coming down. And if I can <laughs> just put a ball in play, you know, I'm done. My life is set. Yeah. Yeah. Like again, what a, what a, what a check, what a, what a yeah. box to check off, play St. Andrews. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, we actually, um, funny little story about the Masters. I uh, work in TV broadcast uh, sales, and we had the rights to uh, Global at the time uh, for a few years, the Masters. And uh, we were supposed to head down there. And uh, sadly, that's the year um, my manager was let go. <laughs> and um the whole kind of division was shaken up and uh no one at the time was able to head down to augusta so a little disheartening that was a yep. big uh actually stab in the heart of my golf world of like it just hanging above you you know the idea of going to your you know my yeah, again, place the you Eden. Know, yeah yeah like again for us it's like you have a very slim slim chance of ever just walking onto the place mm-hmm. we'll never be able to play it okay fine but just going down and watching around or something like that was such a slim chance 
it's you know it's 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 like a, they they have a lottery for for the tickets yeah. and i mean that's a lottery i'll never win you know what i mean like so we'll never get to put st andrews is the is you can really alleviate that that never going to play at augusta or never being at augusta by yeah well I'm, i can go and play at the home of golf or the you know the home of golf st andrews i can go play there so that might offset the never being able to get get to augusta right yeah, and there's been so many memories too there that it it does hold so much weight as well. The, the fact that you can play it too, mm-hmm. um, that would be wonderful. So, um, um, so buddy, um, as we're going to try and wrap this up here now, um, future for Bingo BBB. What are you What are you looking really looking forward to doing? And say, let's say, this summer. This summer. Oh, that's a, a lot easier. I, I am going to yeah, try to get a few podcasts maybe at the tail end of the uh, spring here. But, but when the good weather comes, it's going to be uh, matches with people kind of all over parts of our group, um, other Instagrammers, kind of YouTubers out there. Um, and it's not just going to be Toronto. We're going to try to do, you know, maybe dip into the States a little. We have some connections in Chicago and um, Detroit area. Really want to get out west to see you guys and there's some people in bc as well um shout out to greenhorn golfers and dance them um dance but yeah it's that connection and play with more like you were saying play more golf play more so golf. um we're going to play more golf as a group and we're also going to sh- hopefully show more content in the in term perfect perfect i'm looking forward to it buddy so now as we as we're going to close out this podcast one of the things i always like to ask my guests because i'm becoming a little bit of a a tech geek what's in the bag dude what are you rocking right now and, and is is that is your setup that you have right now the setup you're going to be using in the summer so my little mission over the winter was i was creating a few mixed bags so i have like a mizuno uh, sunday bag i created um with some t's odds like a mixed bag but i would say what i'm rocking right now um i was telling you the r9 um okay driver and yep it's been my bag since 2012 it's been in there for, i forget how long now um but i love it yeah um, i rotate speaking i think i actually it's just off camera over there you see the yep. tailor me the next one in with that white the, just off the camera just there, off yeah. camera that's the tailor made r9 nice i, I lost my uh, uh head cover sadly so some clubhouse has it and oh. there i lost some found um but another older club, tailor made as well. It's um, the V Steel is my three wood. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And actually, funny story, I broke it um, this summer. Down, boom, snaps in half, sticks into the ground. And my buddy just was like, what happened here? We see, you know, pick it up in two pieces. Oh, my God. So I love this club. So I'm like, I got to get this fixed. So I want steel, you know, shaft mm-hmm. and everything done the same. I bring it into Golf Town. I'm not going to say which one. And the guy said, no point fixing this. You probably couldn't hit this club over 200 yards. And everyone's like, no one uses steel anymore. So um, I'll show you some new tailor-mades. How about that? And I instantly said, goodbye, sir. <laughs> and I actually went to another golf town and they were great. And they said, let's build you your club. And uh, it's back in full order this year. So um hitting well over 250 with that. So. 250 with a three one okay I'm it, at, it can get up there i'm at 220 with mine so that's again that's my favorite club in the bag is i have a tailor-made r9 three wood with a medium flex shaft that will never be going anywhere that is my it's the best club best club in the bag is my three wood um i picked it up very cheap but it's never coming out of the bag yeah and uh down to the irons like i have right now i'm playing around with a two iron um seven wood um like a hybrid club it's just kind of playing around there but my irons are an old ping i3s uh some blades yeah yeah um and um i do have some cavity backs that just when i'm not swinging well just in case because i go from every speed i you know i can really pound the ball or there's days where i'm out there just tempo town so i need to switch depending on what kind of mood i'm in and uh love my wilson wedges um, I've got some old school uh, staffs that I use. And then, nice. Yeah, I love Wilson. I'm a Wilson guy too. Um, as you can see, the 
there, uh, right? Yeah. Or- yeah, over there. I've got the staff bag and uh, the black and red one next to it's a Wilson one too. That's the one I usually use my cart bag in the summer. The the staff bag usually doesn't get outside much. I'm using it right now for the sim league, but it doesn't see a lot of daylight. Yeah. I, I need to find a nice old Wilson tour bag. That's the dream to have one of those. Yeah. So this staff bag, the only difference with this staff bag is the front panel doesn't come off. It's attached at okay, the bottom. Yeah. So yeah. it's like the step down, I guess, from that, from the tour staff bag. I really want to get, I really want to get a patch on front of it with the mulligans and hackers and my name on it, you know, very, Ooh, just, that just great. total vanity project, right? Yeah. Yeah. Next eight, winter. Eight, 18 handicap with a, with a golf bag with his name on it. Right. Yeah. God, gotta love it. You love it. And okay. uh, down to uh, the putter. Um, I go back and forth, but um, I have a two ball old Odyssey one that I like, but uh, to be honest, my dad's old uh, ping a blade. Yeah. Yeah. It's always around. It's always reliable. Um, and uh, I usually don't like taking it to some courses just cause you never know who's going to like look in your bag. So exactly. Certain rounds I bring it out for, but uh, yeah, that's kind of my my bag. Nice, I'd rock something like that. You bet. I got the the Wilson D seven irons in my bag right now. That's what I'm rocking. Beautiful. So, and I got I love a that. four Wilson D seven four hybrid as well in the bag. Um, yeah, Wilson, their new Wil- blades, their new blades that uh, Wilson's is um, the Wilson staff are definitely on my list. I love Mizuno's too, but yeah, the uh, Chris really- Chris. So my buddy, Chris, who's usually on the podcast with us, um, he's a Mizuno guy. His bag, his entire bag is Mizuno right now, oh, yeah. except for putter. And all of his, so he went and got his irons custom fit for him. Can't remember what what they are, uh, but he's got his Mizuno irons custom fit to him. He, and he just went this off season and he got his driver, three wood and five wood, custom made for him as well, Mizuno. So his Mizuno, his, Mizuno life. His, so now I tell him, well, you need to get a Mizuno golf bag now because I think I uh, uh, can't remember Bomb Tech. I think is the golf bag that he's rocking right now. So uh, it's like, dude, you got to get a Mizuno golf bag. Oh <laughs> yeah, he's gonna love our little Mizuno uh, Sunday bag then. Yeah, yeah, man. Post that next week. You bet. That, that'd be awesome. So, all right, man. Well, I really appreciate your time and I appreciate you coming on and chatting with us. Um, I hope that you get the podcast going. And if you ever need anybody to come on your podcast and chat we're we're available we'll we'll work something out and... no i appreciate it and yeah it'd be nice to connect with chris as well um but yeah, yeah thank you elvin for taking the time really appreciate that i appreciate your time too buddy and uh you know, all the best this summer with, with, with your page and your content and uh let's stay in touch let's let's do this again next year in the yeah. off season and see where we're both at i like that i like the sounds of that Solid we'll check plan. It. yeah yeah let's do that well, cheers to you, Elvin. Have a great night. You too, buddy. Take care and we'll, we'll see you later. Again.